Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the different types of master's courses. So it's springtime now, which means that it's around the time of year when people are starting to think about postgraduate study and what types of courses they would like to do. So I'm going to tell you all about the different types of master's courses that are out there. First of all, the master's courses can be divided into three main categories and these are taught, research and professional. The main types I'm going to cover in this video today are the taught and research masters because in the scientific field it will usually be an MSc or it will be an MRes and sometimes it can also be an MPhil. I will explain all of that in a minute. So I'm going to start by talking about the MSc course first, then an MRes and then I will talk to you about the MPhil. MSc courses are typically associated with STEM subjects, so science, engineering, technology and maths, as well as some social sciences such as marketing and communications, political sciences and various other subject areas. Here I'm using University of Birmingham as an example because it's where I've been for the past seven years, so naturally I will mention this university quite a lot. Anyway, MSc courses are predominantly taught courses. There are a few exceptions that do include a research project, such as the MSc Immunology and Immunotherapy at the University of Birmingham, but the emphasis in the MSc course is most commonly on the taught elements. With the MRes courses, now these are also available in a variety of subject areas, such as ancient history, maths, archaeology, biomedical research, and various other areas such as cancer sciences, which is the course that I did myself in the 2017 to 2018 academic year. The main difference between MRes and an MSc course is the research component. MRes courses typically have less contact hours and by that I mean that there is less teaching in those courses and more research whereas an MSc course you do get more teaching like I said sometimes you get a research project in an MSc course but you get more contact hours there when it comes to teaching when I did the MRS Cancer Sciences back in 2017 to 2018 I spent about nine months in the lab I did have taught modules on that course and in the first semester we had taught modules running alongside the research project so we actually had to kind of leave the lab for a bit and go into the lectures whereas now they've changed the course so that all the taught elements are done before Christmas and then students just carry on doing their research full-time from January onwards for about six or seven months but yes, MRS courses are predominantly focused on research because there is a lot of focus on research in the MRS courses these courses are usually seen as a stepping stone towards a PhD. On these courses, you do gain quite an extensive hands-on experience in research. Again, you can get that in some MSc courses, but you just get more of that in the MRS courses. And usually, if people are considering a career in research and they want to go on to do a PhD, they do tend to go for the MRS courses rather than MSc. Although, just to mention, I do actually know somebody who did an MSc course and they did get on to a PhD program. So it really depends on the course, but there is a much bigger research element in an MRS compared to an MSc. And the third type of master's course that you can encounter in science is an MPhil. Again, kind of like the MRes, MPhil is a step towards a PhD and a lot of the time it's actually part of a PhD program. So some PhD programs work as a three plus one. So what that means is that in the first year you spend time doing rotations between different projects. And usually what people do at the end of that year is the last project that they do usually stay on that project and they make that into the PhD. So they continue working on that project for the next three years. Sometimes you can get an MPhil where it's just a standalone qualification and the main difference between an MPhil and the previously mentioned MSc and MRes courses is that an MPhil only involves a research project. You don't actually have any teaching elements there whatsoever, it consists entirely of your own independent project. MPhil is a little bit strange because although it is a master's qualification, it does kind of sit on the border between a master's and the next postgraduate qualification. And this is because an MPhil is actually much more like a PhD because this course is basically just pure research. So if we actually rank MSc, MRes and MPhil, you've basically got the course which has got less research element and more teaching. You have the course which is more research, less teaching. And then you have the course which is just pure research. I think my top tips for those considering postgraduate study would be 
consider what you want to do in the future. If you want to do research, I would recommend doing an MRES or an MPhil. I personally quite like the idea of having some full element to the course, but a bigger research component, which is why I did an MRES in the end. However, if you want to do research and you feel like you just want to spend time purely doing research, then MPhil would probably be a more suitable course for you. So it's entirely up to you, which leads me on to my second tip, and that is do check the course details before you apply. I'd say don't look at all the MSc courses as purely taught courses because like I mentioned a few times in this video some MSc courses do have a research element to them so you might actually find that that's a ideal course for you and also look at the subject areas that are covered in the courses so for example cancer sciences MRES actually covers a variety of topics the main two areas this course focuses on are the cancer genomics and immunology and immunotherapy the earlier mentioned immunology and immunotherapy MSc is as the title says, focus on immunology and immunotherapy. So again, check the contents of the course. And then point number three is make sure that you contact the university and or some people who have done the courses before, because that would help you understand what the course actually entails. So you can actually get a good feel of what to expect from the course. So that's it for this video. I will provide some useful links about the different types of master's courses in the description box below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Leave your comments below if you've got any questions for me. And I will see you in the next video.